Sorry. 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 I brought the, the Grand Old Opry quilt. I rolled oh, it up. Oh, did you? Of course, I promised. I keep my promise, thank you. <laughs> so it's like this long. And she's and lugging it, rolls, it around like and this got, everywhere she goes. And the thing is that security in Dallas, they say, what body's in that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Texas. I'm a Texas T Tennessean. These are my bling bling boots. Gotta show them where I go. And yes, this is my this is my new birthday outfit. I got this for I bought this for myself for my birthday. Even the jewelry. <laughs> Thank you. Dane, Diane Rose. Oh, Diane, I'm I just have a, thrilled for are, are you. Are all of y'all kind of related or not really? She's my granddaughter yeah. and her dear husband, Nate. You know, I'm in um, awe of people that can do these kinds of things hold on, where hold I on, couldn't hold on, hold on, with hold on, all my full on. sight. <laughs> I think. Jenny, there's oh, the book. Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars. <laughs> now, some of these quilts that's in this book may already be sold, but on my website, the ones that are there are are, are ready to be. They need homes. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you do some machine stitching too? And hand stitching. Oh, oh wow. you're amazing. How many years have you been doing this? Since August 14th of 1998. Mm -hmm. And I have a 1,100 and whatever quilts done. Oh, wow. And I brought my My sister quilt. would be impressed. She loves quilting. Wow. Look at this one with the musical instruments. Oh, wow. That was for Roy Clark. <gasps> I get to work for two days. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. We need someone in here. <laughs> Not me all alone. Oh, we'll here, get one there. Work. Hold on. Hey, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. You're Hi. here. Oh, I get to meet her. Hi, babe. Oh, I get to meet her. She had done this. This is one of my fans that bought a quilt one of whatever years ago that yes, was. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, she's in the picture. Just oh. put honey in it and it has the little honey. I just want to be a stay at home dog mom. <laughs> that it goes to my neighbor who's taking care of my house. <laughs> oh, perfect. She'll love that. In here, we bring all of the machines when they're finished. We're gonna go into the machine room where we do all of our testing. The machines come here, they get boxed. And this is where they then get moved back out to storage, but this is the final room. I'm gonna walk you over to a bench that we have. So this is that small machine left and right, and that's the insides of the machine. Hey, this is... Oh. That was the front part that's lifted, but if you can feel here, this is the shaft in the middle yeah, that yeah, spins. Yeah. Put your hands now forward, there is a machine. And oh, if you fill the fabric, guy. it's a very small piece of fabric, and you'll feel there's a bunch of scribbling. Mm -hmm. So every machine has to have a certain amount of sewing done, and we check its direction, we check its quality. This one is what takes the machine across the frame left to right. This is what moves the machine front to back. Go ahead and lift, just want you to move the lift the right so you can feel it's kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is what is required in order to make it automated or automatic. I'm going to pick one up here. Yeah. So these are parts of frames and different mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. If they don't meet our quality spec, they're now in our recycling bin. This so so this is just a kind of an interesting part of it. In fact, here's, I want you to have you fill this. What does that feel like to you? Oh, that's where the machine sits it's, in it's, there. It's, it's the body of the machine. Yeah, there's the mouth. This is the skeleton. This is, <laughs> yeah. So this one was one we got as a prototype as we were designing some stuff. Now it's time to be recycled. Okay. At yeah, the very that, top, there's a light that's about two and a half feet wide. So how many lights do you have when you film? Right now, there's one, two, three, four, oh, five, five lights oh, there. Guys. Feel how that one mm -hmm. is a little bit different than this one. So our engineering team will design it. This one's extruded aluminum. You feel, feel this one is made out of plastic, but it's shaped different. 
That one's actually made out of a prototype material. We then end with this, which is the metal one, right? So you I have to start you with, gotta use this to, yeah. to start to change, right? Then once mm -hmm. we decide that it is good to go, then we make it, then we make it into the real good. Hello everyone and welcome to the Grace Company Fantastic Fall Festival. <laughs> My name is Jenny Larson. I am part of the creative team here at the Grace Company. Although blind since birth, our next guest is considered a prodigy in the quilting world. She is a motivational speaker, a businesswoman, a formal journalist, and the founder of the charity Faith House. I am so honored to introduce to you the amazing quilter, Diane Rose. Thank you. <laughs> Diane, can you share with us your story? Have you always been blind? I was born with glaucoma and at three years old, they discovered that my eyes were not focused. When I was four years old, they went in and discovered I had glaucoma. So I had light perception and color. Um, and I was able to, I, I went to public school. There would be a, a, a room in the school that would have five or six um, kids. I had a wonderful teacher, uh, Janice, who is still in my life, known me since I was seven. Mm -hmm. And I saw color. I got the uh, images. And then in 1984, now remind you, I went to public school all the way through school. So in 1984, I was going to have a cornea transplant four days before a cornea transplant. The cornea ruptured, fell back to the retina, and ate away the retina and killed the octave nerve. So in the left eye, I used to be able to see out of, I don't remember ever seeing out of the right eye. And when that happened, everything went black. Now, yes, when you lose something, you can grieve. So that first year was very difficult for me um, to adjust. Um, the biggest thing was when cooking, I used to look down and see the burner, but then I had to learn, and I had to do it on my own. No one taught me. I just had to adjust. So I would put my hand on the burner, put the pot down, then turn on the uh, stove. And I forgot, I kept forgetting to turn lights on at, at night. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, and so that was in 1984. Uh, and I, how old were you in 1984? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Just I curious was in my about, 20s. The, about was, the age where you went, in, you went fully blind. I was in my twenties. Twenties. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can tell you because I'd have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get into quilting and how? And when can you I was, just share that story. When I was a little girl, I remember visiting these people in Georgia, and right now I can remember the sun coming through the window, and on a quilt, it was blue and it had yellow. And I found out many years later that was the bow tie quilt pattern. Oh, wow. And I remember seeing that and I loved it, but I never, it was a quilt. That's all it was to me was a quilt. And we never had quilts growing up. About a year, about several months after I had lost my sight, every time I went to church, everybody, oh, let's pray for your eyes. Let's pray for your eyes. And I don't mind people doing that, and that's fine, but don't dig up a seed that you've already planted. I learned, I've learned that. Well, church was over, and, and the gentleman that was the prophet, prophet, um, the visiting preacher that time came up to me, and he said, I want to pray for you, but I don't want to pray for your eyes. God has something very special. And I looked at him, I thought, okay, you got my interest. He said, the Lord has something special. He said, God's going to bless you with a talent. It's going to explode into color. You're going to make something and it's going to explode you around. You're going to be well known around the world. You will be able to teach and share other people with disabilities and show them they can do something. But this talent is not now. But when it happens, you won't know it at that time but it would be colorful. You would stand in front of dignitaries and presidents and kings and queens. And this this talent will go all the way around the world and people will buy these and and you will be blessed beyond measure. I thought the man was nuts. <laughs> I did. I didn't believe him. So in 1998, I was visiting a lady in the country, Pat. And when I was doing that, I was felt on the back of the couch and there was a lot... Um, it wasn't a log. Oh, split rail, a split rail quilt. 
And, and she says, oh, Diane, do you know how to quilt? And I said, no. She said, do you know how to sew? Yes. Do you know how to use a sewing machine? Yes. She says, I'll teach you how to quilt. So on August 14th of 1998, I went to her house and I wanted to remember that date, the day I actually, and I didn't know why. Okay. Well, we cut out five inch squares, sold them together on the sewing machine, opened the seams and then did the next row and put that, uh, the backing in the, in the batting. And then we folded up the edge and I hand stitched through the square in the middle of the square. And then I turned the quilt around, did all of them, doom, 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 like this, then turned the quilt around, did it. It was supposed to be straight across the middle of the square. It looked like I was drunk driving. <laughs> <laughs> so we called it Miranda Lane. I was praying one night and God told me I was going to meet Governor George W. Bush and he was governor of Texas. And I sat straight up in bed and I said, how, Lord, how can that happen? Well, the next morning I turned the radio on and I said, oh, Governor George W. Bush is going to be uh, dedicating a courthouse in Hillsborough, t- uh, Texas. And I went, Oh, what do I do now? And I stood there at the phone and said, Lord, so I called director assistance. I got the governor's office. I called up there, explained who I was. I wanted to meet him. They called me back. By that Saturday, I went and I got to meet him and I presented him with a Texas flag. And after that, it exploded. Wow. So in 2008, I was visiting somebody in Tennessee and the Texas country reporter was on television. I pointed at TV and I said, I'm going to be on that show. And she said, what? And my girlfriend, did, and I, I said, yeah. And she said, no, you can't. And a year later, um, I had someone sent a thing to them. He contacted me and I went and, and he came to the house. Bob Phillips came to the house. We did the show. And in 2008, I did the festival. 2009, I won the Barbara Jordan Media Achievement Disability Award from wow. um, the governor's office in, in Texas. 2010, it exploded on YouTube and still going. Wow. So yes, a lot of, a lot of people have, um, my quilts, uh, when it exploded in 2012. I, I've always wanted to go to England. So I got to go to England. And I came within 10 feet of meeting the queen, but Prince William and Kate had the first baby quilt when pet, when um, Prince George was born. So Prince George mm-hmm. has a baby quilt that you presented them. Yes. Now, I couldn't actually meet them, but they called where I was, and I was able to send it. Uh, several other, uh, Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, uh, Riders in the Sky, uh, Porter Wagner, Roy Clark, George W. Bush, um, Rick Perry, Greg Abbott, who are the governors. And you want to know who I want to meet someday? Who do you want to meet? President Trump. I have a quote for him. Do want, you really? I want, to, <laughs> I want to meet him. I want, And I want to meet Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, who are very special to me that I've never met. In, and I want to meet Oprah. Wow. Because she does a lot of things with people and she's a special lady. I just like to meet with her. Um, I would not be doing this if this was not from God. I did not plan this. I did not think this. This is honest and truthfully what God gave me to do, to bless others, to encourage others, to not give up because I don't give up. Now, I might have a moment to fall on my face, but I'm going to get back up. I'm like those punching bags. You punch them and they bounce back. <laughs> That's who I am. I punch back. What an incredible story. And I have no doubt with what you just told me that Trump and Oprah and all the Kenneth people you Gloria. wish to meet, yeah, they are going to be a call I wanted to ask you, what is your creative process when you begin a quilt? I love to read. I have a vivid imagination. One of the things that when I did lose the rest of my sight, Mm -hmm. I did not lose vision, insight of, of color and objects. So when I read, I visualize what's happening and that kind of gives me an idea. Or if I go somewhere where I've never been, um, for example, if I went to Yellowstone or Alaska or like when I went to, uh, England, um, I came up with an idea. Uh, I'm always, when I read, I come up with an idea how to do a quilt and I will have it in my head. Oh, 
you know, like the gin, well, I'm gonna design a, a gingerbread house. Okay, let me do the snow and the gingerbread house here and then the snow like this and put gingerbread men all around, da, da, da. I, I love designing and people say, how do you do it if you can't see? Well, you got a imagination. So um, I am blessed with a, a lady. I wish I had another one. Her name's Emily, and she has a full-time job, and I can go like this with my hands and say, okay, I want this here, like um, the harvest moon. I have a quote called the harvest moon. I want a dark color, almost night sky with a moon, the pumpkins, a hayride, mm -hmm. da, da. And I did that, and she cut those pieces out. Now, I have an actual cut for most of my um, cut out things, mm -hmm. but yes, and and God gives me a vision. He gives me a, a a reason to do this. I wouldn't do it without Him. Well, I love the fact that you said that it all starts in your imagination. You have a great, you know, you have a big imagination, <laughs> and I love that because I say all the time that everything you see around you first started in someone's imagination. Exactly. So the idea that because you are blind that you couldn't envision and create anything you wanted to, it's where it all starts. Are there any quotes that you're currently working on? The cat in the hat. The cat in the hat, I when, love it. So what was your process to start the cat in the hat? If you can just, I think so many of the viewers okay. watching this are wondering, how does she start a quilt? How are you going a, through that process? I had a piece of fabric that was like, I think it's about two yards. On the back is a scene from the cat in the hat. Now, I have to <laughs> admit, I had Emily, because I was busy or going out of town or whatever the day was, and I said, Emily, let's find the colors. We found the blue background and found all the colors I had in my stash, mm -hmm. and she cut it out because I didn't have the things on the AccuCut. And I didn't realize she was going to put the words, the cat and the hat, but that's okay. <laughs> now, there are several other things that I um, I did the the veggie tails. Um, there's so many different. There was one that, that I did with um, uh, the baby quilts go like hotcakes. So the amazingquilter.com has all the quilts that are for sale. But the um, I will cut out like if I'm going to do cats. I have a cat um, die. Mm -hmm. So I will iron wonder under onto a piece of fabric and cut it into like a six inch square, place it on the die, put the mat on it, crank it through the AccuCut, bingo, there's the shape of the cat. Okay, then then I, I have a big piece of fabric and let's say I'm just gonna put cats all over it. Mm -hmm. So I start placing bing, 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 or maybe take a round thing that would be a bowl for the cat food or something. Mm -hmm place all the kitties all around like this. Mm -hmm. And then I peel off the back and take the iron, and I have a cordless iron that I love, and place it on there, iron that on. Then the easiest way to do it is get some batting to shape of what you just did and your back, and you take your, your front of the quilt and your back of the quilt and you kiss like this. Mm -hmm. Lay it down, put your batting on top, and pin all, I pin all the way around, Right here at the top, I'll put two pins here, two pins here. Then on the sewing machine, I will sew all the way around. Then I turn it inside out and then stick, close it. And when you turn it inside out, you got your front and your back are facing each other. So when you turn it inside out, you got your front and your back and your, and your batting's in the middle. And then you stitch it closed on the sewing machine. Then I stitch all the way around it. Then I put pins in all the kitty cats. And then I go back and hand stitch each cat. Wow, what and a I, process. Yes, so that's kind of a general idea. Now, if I'm piecing a quilt, then I will have like what I did with the crazy quilt. Mm -hmm. um, I, I That was a paper piece um, one. If it's a, a quilt pattern, then whoever's with me uh, will cut the pieces, will pin it, sew it, iron it open, go to the next step. So because everything starts in your imagination, when you started your cat in the hat quilt, what did you envision before you ever did anything on a quilt? What popped up in your imagination and what inspired you to do the cat in the hat quilt? Because I had the piece of fabric that had the cat, had the Dr. Seuss on it. Got it. <laughs> That's what was all that inspired that way. That doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a quilt that stands out to you where you first saw it in your imagination and then you were able to piece that together. Like how, I'd, I'm just so curious of how you envision a quilt first. 
I um, have a piece of fabric that has snowmen with mm -hmm. campers. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, that'd be cool. I could do like maybe um, like little log cabins or something and then have, have the campers with the snowmen. And I mean, I'm still, as I'm doing it, I'm still creating. You're still hmm. imagining it. Yeah, put a Christmas tree and uh, or maybe do a whole Christmas tree like this and then maybe around the tree have all the snowmen with all their campers. I don't know yet. Oh, I have cute. A, I haven't put that together. I mean, that's just a thought. Yeah. Okay, you got to have a thought to have an imagination. You do have to have a thought. And the nice thing about imagination is it can, it grows. It mm -hmm. continues. Like the vision grows. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Like you start mm -hmm. with a vision right. and a thought and then it just grows into a... A quilt. Exactly. That is so great. And because of that, of the quilting I'm doing, I really felt it was time to go to the next step. And so many people that have different disabilities um, have called me and asked me, can you help me this? Can you help me that? And I'm like, yeah. So one night I had a dream of a vision of a house. I mean, as, just as visual as can be. And I held on to that for a couple of years and I told somebody about it and we drew it. She drew it, took it to her husband. Then the kids took Legos on the poster board and did what the drawing was. And I call that the faith house. So I am raising money to build that house. So those that want to help to build the house, you're building a house. Okay. So that money will not, it will not be start building to all the money is there. It's going to probably be three to $400,000, but that's to build the house, to be able to have a big giant sewing room, a display room, and where I can show and, and ha help other people, maybe off to the side, have maybe a, like a little gift shop thing because there's a lot of other things that I do make but those are things that I take with me when I go speaking engagements only on the website is the quilts but to have that faith house and that's from the Diane Rose Ministries and what do you envision and that just leads us right into your charity the faith house um, tell us a little bit about your goal with the faith house i know you had mentioned you want a home that people with disabilities can come learn these things mm -hmm. i want to be able to teach them i have a lot of people that you know would come if i had the have the space and the place to show them um how to and and not just people with disabilities even people that want to learn how to quilt or learn how to stop it's easy yeah <laughs> it really is and people make it so much more difficult than what it is um, and I think I read on your site that you have now raised enough money to purchase the land for your your faith house. Well, that, there was a glitch in that part. Um, yes, I do have the, a piece of land, but I just recently found out this year that I can't build on that because there's a giant drop-off that I was not aware of. But the great God thing is that behind it is woods. Behind that, they're developing a... Uh, subdivision. So when that happens, they would have to buy that from me because they would come through the woods and buy right where that is uh, as a as a street. So I'm in the process of trying to find another place. I I believe it's in Texas. I'm hoping and praying it's up by Eagle Mountain Church, um, up near Fort Worth. I don't feel like I'm supposed to stay in Waco the rest of my life, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I want to do. I want to be led to where God wants to take me, not where I don't want to get ahead of God because sometimes we do that and we make a mistake. Yes. And we learn from that. <laughs> you have a calling that Waco isn't your final destination is what you're mm -hmm. saying. Correct. So where are some places that you do envision yourself? Where the house needs to be, I'm still seeking God for that. And I don't, I don't know where the piece of land is. I don't know if someone's going to donate it somewhere. I don't know that. Um, I know it's where people can get to me, not so far out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So um, the bottom line is I'm trusting God to find the place where I need to be to be able to build this house. And here's the neat thing about those that want to participate. There is a PayPal account on my website, The Amazing Quilter. If you have a PayPal account, click on Friends and Family. You can donate to that. It is a, t uh, a tax write-off tax-free 501c3, I mm -hmm. guess is what they call it. You can put your name. Some people do it anonymously. Those that participate. Now, remember, you're building, you're helping build the house. So helping to build that house, your name will be put on the plaque that will hang in the foyer because you should be honored 
for something you've done. How many times people beg um, money on to people for this and that, and they don't know where their money is, and they don't get recognized. Well, I want to recognize you for who you are, for what you do, regardless what it is, either for me or anybody else. And that's important. So with this house, um, your name will be put on the plaque. If you want to do it anonymously, you are more than welcome. I would love you to be a part of it. All my quotes are on the website, are, are for purchase, and you could do it through the PayPal thing as well. And I do UPS and I do call you and confirm. So always leave your phone number. I do speak in various organizations around the country, uh, from quilt guilds, quilt shops, quilt retreats, churches, schools, and organizations that are doing, um, big, uh, conferences. I will do that. Um, I will go anywhere God will send me because he protects me and I trust him to take care of me. Do you, with your charity and with the quilts that you make outside of donating to Faith House, do you have any other way people can, do you take donations like in fabrics or in oh, batting or anything like that? Do you do oh, in-kind donations as well? Yes. Um, a lot of folks, as grandma or mom died, they have all this fabric and they don't know what to do with it. That can all, that's on the website too. That can be donated. Your trash is my treasure. <laughs> I use it for something. I use it with a lot of different um, things. I'll make uh, pot holders, cell phone holders, tote bags. Um, might go into a quote, you never know. So the, those kind of things all the time. And that's why I'm, I'm really praying, believing God to be able to get that house going soon um, so I can have a bigger storeroom and be able to um, have things separated. I have tubs that do have my my solid colors in this my baby prints are in that mm -hmm. that kind of thing and and i've done various um quilts with like neckties and i did flan i've done flannel and things like that that's really that's really incredible you did ask me earlier and i didn't answer you so i apologize no, some great. of the places that i do want to visit and go someday is alaska and yellowstone never been there um, I've been to Mount Rushmore, I've been to Hershey, Pennsylvania, and I got to come to Grace Company. You got to come to Utah to the Grace Company. <laughs> I've never been to Utah, and that was on my bucket, bucket list. So I am honored, and each and every one of the folks that are here will help you. And these are beautiful machines. Someday I would love to have something like that, because it's got the big mouth sewing machine right. that you could take off the rods. Of it I love that. certainly does. Mm -hmm. Well, Diane, thank you so much for coming to Utah and sharing your gift and your amazing story with us and if you guys would like to support Diane in her quilting and in her faith house you can visit her website at theamazingquilter.com we hope you've enjoyed Diane's story and I'm sure you're inspired by her as much as we have all been inspired by her and thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of the fantastic fall festival so proud to be here. Thank you, y'all, for letting me be here and experience all this. So thank you. Is this live video here? Yes, do 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 it. Whatever. We're doing video and a photo right now. Yes. It's such an honor to have you. Oh, to be around. with the president of Grace Company. I am blessed. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, we're rolling. So. Oh, really? Wow. Ready, go. <laughs> you got to say action. <laughs> I love that part. Hello and welcome to the Grace Company. My name is Janessa and I have the incredible Diana Rose here with me today. Um, and we are lucky enough that she brought some quilts all the way from Texas. Um, and she's going to walk us through just a few of those and this beautiful one on the back. But we're going to get started with this quilt here. Um, so this quilt, Diane, can you tell me a little bit about it, its name, um, your process, all of that fun stuff? So this, this is, which one did you grab? Oh, this is the Harvest Moon. The Harvest Moon. Well, someone said I need to make one for the fall. So <laughs> the Harvest Moon, I thought, ooh, a dark blue, almost a black, with the moon in the middle, with the, mu the, mu the pumpkins 
<clears throat> a hayride and looking like the harvest, you know? And look what's on the back. Oh, I love the pumpkins. Fall is probably my favorite season, okay, so I love this Okay, look on that quilt. corner <laughs> over there. Look on that corner over there. Read what's on that corner. Oh, right here. Let me read it. So it says, Harvest Moon Cotton Machine Wash Cold Dry Low. Um, made by Diane Rose, August of 2019, Matthew 9:38. Okay, what quilt number? Oh, this is quilt number 1043 Scenery Throw. Okay, each quilt is numbered. As I have started when I started a quilt, someone told me to number your quilts. So this is my 1,043rd one. Now I am up to 1,100 and something. And all the quilts are made where you can use them. And there is instructions on each quilt how to wash them. And the, this one, um, there's, I have a whole bunch more quilts. They're all on theamazingquilter.com. If you go to theamazingquilter.com, check out. And when you do, go to PayPal, pick out what quilt you want, go to PayPal, and you can do it through that. I will UPS it to you and please leave your phone number and address and i look forward to blessing you with a comforting wonderful quilt they are all prayed over and the presence of god is on each one of these and there's always a reference to a scripture oh i love that i love this quilt and it's perfect for our fall festival too it's amazing <laughs> okay let's look at the next one this quilt has a fun name what do you what do you call this quilt this is a paper piecing crazy quilt the story behind this is someone wanted me, and I yes, I do do custom made. So, uh, a, a couple that wanted me to make a quilt from their clown. They were professional clowns, and they wanted me to make a quilt with their pieces of their outfits. So, I, with my friend Emily, she cut out. I believe it was like ten inch square piece of paper took two little pieces of fabric, about mm, two inches, three inches, sewed those two pieces to, now she pinned it to the paper in the middle, and then I sewed it with the paper and that, opened it up, then I put another piece here. There was a lot of leftover blocks, so I thought, I'm not gonna waste those blocks, let's make a quilt. So this was a very difficult, a lot of time consuming, um, but it was incredibly um, with pieces of fabric that I just had little pieces. So don't throw your fabric away. Keep those scraps. <laughs> Keep those scraps. And for those that do have folks that uh, mother died, I don't know what to do with the, the fabric. Um, I use everything. So you are welcome to send anything. And it's not just the quilts. I do several little items like paw holders, cell phone holders, uh, tote bags and I when I go travel and I have to speak somewhere then I take those smaller items they are not available on theamazingculture.com now go to here's the label over here read me that label okay so this is quilt number um, 1080 and this is Romans 828 and it's beautiful. I really like how on this quilt you've got a ton of different types of fabric. <laughs> There's like the velvet here. I mean, it's just so much fun, all the colors, but also all of the textures and different designs too. Um, and I like how you've kind of, it looks like you've machine quilted um, In a bunch blocks. of different um, like looks and designs of stitches too, which I is I would awesome. love to find another person that was like my friend Emily, who now has a full-time job, to come to me for a couple hours from time to time that might live in the Waco area to do different quilt patterns because I love to do, there's thousands of quilt patterns and I love to come up like um, uh, stairs, stair steps to the altar or Joseph's coat of many colors, uh, just thousands of things. And I would love to do more. So yeah, just get in touch with me and I'd love to come visit me. I do have kitties, so don't, <laughs> if you're allergic to kitties, we'll find a place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing this. And I know the quilt that everyone is really, really excited to hear about, we have behind us. Um, can you tell me a little bit about this quilt? Um, I know it's got a really amazing story. This is my 1,000th quilt. I started a quilt in August 14th of 1998. And I had told the la asked the lady that taught me, Pat, can I make, how many quilts come in? She said, you make as many as you want. And I said, you know what? If I get to a thousand, I want to make a Grand Ole Opry quilt only because the Grand Ole Opry is family to me. 
and I, I am very blessed to have lots of friends and fans and Grand Old Opry family, and I have godly family. And most of these people on here have gone to heaven. But the cool thing is it took a lot of time. I had several people that assisted in it. Um, Stephanie, my, my daughter, my spiritual daughter, helped with the pictures. My friend Margaret helped with the pictures a little bit. So on each picture is what number, what member of the Grand Old Opry they are. So there are 218 p members from 19, 1925 to, 19, to 2018. In the middle is the barn, from, and that's from um, the beginning of the Grand Old Opry with the logo from the insurance, uh, uh, what's it say, Life? A service of, oh. of the National Life and Accident Insurance Company Incorporated shields you. Yes. A Emily helped me with the finding the background color and then my friend Cheryl and I had together laid the pictures and we decided on each side of the barn and then um, impressed those. But when I went to Linda Dell's, Linnell, Linda Dell's, I keep forgetting how pronouncing her name wrong. We put wax on the pictures, uh, wax paper, I'm sorry, wax paper on the pictures. And then with her long arm quilting machine, we quilted around of the pictures and then peeled off the, the wax paper. And then when you see the guitars, I got to do that part on the long arm quilting machine. Was that using automation or free motion? Free motion. Free motion. Oh, it's seriously so beautiful. Well, she put it on her computer, the shape of a guitar, and then I followed it with like this. Oh, you got to follow it around. Oh, that is so amazing. I, I got to it. do that part. That was the best part. But no, this is not for sale. This is for keep. And when I die, it will be donated to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Some of the other quilts I have, and there are lots of other quilts on The Amazing Quilter. You are welcome to view that. Christmas is coming up. And I do also do custom-made quilts. I've had lots of people ask me to do a custom-made quilt. Um, I've done lots of blue jean quilts. Uh, flannel quilts, just all kinds. I love <laughs> a little bit I of everything. Yes, yes, I love and, to do. Um, if you look at her website, you really can see just the tons of different styles, looks, designs. I know you do enjoy doing a lot of um, applique, which is just and beautiful. Stitching. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Grace Company and sharing some of your incredible quilts with us. We so appreciate you, um, and can't wait to see what you come up with next. So thanks for joining us. You're welcome, and, and thank you for having me. This has been a great honor to meet and be around each and every one. And I just want to encourage you quilters, please don't stop because your eyes have gone dim. You, you keep on quilting because you can do it. If I can, you can. Be blessed and know that Jesus loves you. Thank you so much, Diane. Um, and be sure to check out the next segment where Diane is gonna show us, um, she's gonna try out some Grace Company machines and also show us her process of quilting. She's brought a quilt um, with her today, um, and she's gonna walk us through that. So be sure to check out the next segment. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, let me get you guys back into focus. Then, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of look better out of focus. Diane looks <laughs> great in focus. Okay, go. I've got the bat. okay. Battery's there. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Start. Go. Uh, hi. Carly here <laughs> with the Grace Company, and I am so excited and truly honored to be here today with the amazing quilter, Diane. And Diane is legally blind or totally blind? Totally. Totally blind. And she is here demonstrating quilting for us and showing us how she does it um, and I'm just really excited. She's going to be using our Sure Stitch Elite um, on our cutie frame and she's just going to show us how to do it. So let's let, turn the time over to her and Diane's going to start it. She's absolutely, she has this down right there <laughs> and we've, we're using the edge warning system so when you hear it beep she's going to move away. Okay, we're going. Oh. Okay, yeah. All right. You're good. That was supposed to be a heart. That looks actually pretty good. <laughs> that was like, okay. 
All right, let's see what else we can do. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, hi. Don't let that get you. <laughs> okay, now. How about a tree? Oh, tree's awesome. Christmas tree? Yeah, a Christmas tree's great. How about that? That's <laughs> well, perfect. So we, we got that. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh this turn it? Yeah. Let's see. So she could fill her work, yeah. You did a lot of it over in here. Yep. Look at it. Oh, cool beans. Woohoo! Now, can you do that with your eyes closed? No. <laughs> Not nearly as good. <laughs> but we could definitely try. But I know I can't do as well as you. Okay. Just push it on again. Yeah, it's a little sensitive. Now, don't worry about that. Just move it until you can hit it. Fun, isn't it, Diane? She's getting a fill for it. There's your tree. Ha ha! <laughs> you figured it out. I did. I could tell what you were making. <laughs> it's right here. This is your zigzags yeah, yeah, right in yeah, here. Right there. You're kind yeah. of yeah. Yep. So Carly here again with the amazing quilter Diane, and I'm showing her the True Cut products. What's nice about the True Cut products is she's got the guide and the track, and she's able to use the holes to fill. So yeah, so it's not over quite yet. Now it's over, Diane. Oh, it's got to make a sound. Yeah. Okay. Now you're going to pull it up. And now she's able to cut. Yeah. It's got a good little guide and you won't yeah. cut yourself. Okay, hold on. Yeah, close it. She's very careful. <laughs> Down this off. Okay. Yeah. And on this blade, on this, you put the button goes down to close the blade and up to oh, oh. Open it. <laughs> or is it the other way around? No, it is yeah, down it's, to close, up, up to, to open. open. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's actually able to fill and, and measure and work with it. So this ruler has each little square is an inch, um, which is really, this is six inches by, I think she said 24, I uh -huh. don't know these. But this is a, a unique different ruler. I have the flat rulers. Um, but yeah, this is neat. I've never seen nothing like this. Look at all the little, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, so Diane, this is a little different, okay? The circle cutter you put on the fabric and it's a tw it can go from 2 inches to 12 inches. This little knob right here, when you unscrew it, I'm going to take your this fingers, one. unscrew it, and it'll loosen it, okay? So you unscrew it and you can adjust it from smaller to larger. But it, wait, wait a minute, it goes like this around it, like this? Right, so so I'll show you how it does it. Let's do cross hands. So let's ta have you take this hand right here, push it down, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so you push this button down and that's the button that's gonna stabilize it and hold it in place. Okay, this? Okay. Now I want you to use this hand here. Now I want you to bring this hand right here Okay. and push on the blade. Now nope, I want you to go over, overhanded, okay? It seems a little awkward, but as you go around, it makes it easier, okay? So you push both of them down. And go forward? And go around. In oh. a circle. Cool. Oh. Okay, oh. keep going, keep going, you got it. Keep going, just a little bit more. Okay, now you're all the way around. That's why oh. I had you cross your hands so that you could go all the way around without stopping. Okay, you're all the oh. way around. You've mm -hmm. already done it, so now pull your circle out. Oh, we, did, we missed a couple little spots, but fill that, it's almost there. Let me cut, finish cutting it out. Oh my gosh, I like that. That's why you don't lift it oh. up at all. So, oh, okay, we're gonna try it one more time. Now that you've got a feel for it, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're gonna put so, another piece? Yeah, I do. I've got <laughs> several. Let me do it. Let me do it. Okay, me do okay, it. okay. Let me do it. Okay, so remember how I told you this hand, Hold this on, hand crosses. I, I know, but I'm making sure. Oh, we're okay. In the middle. Gotcha. Okay, wait a minute. Right. You got it. You got it. Okay. Okay. Because this okay. Is it. Right. Push it down. Keep pushing. You gotta push it all the way. Keep going. You gotta push this one pretty hard. There you go. Keep going. Yeah. I think we got it. There you go. I think you did it. And then when I lift the when you lift it up off, oh we missed a couple of spots. So 
We might need a new blade, but we're going to try it one more time. Let's go over here, do the same thing, and push down really hard on the blade. This part, this hand is the blade, so I want you to keep that push down really hard. Oh, this is just the. the That's one. just to stabilize it. And okay, hold it I in was the doing the wrong. I was okay, you harder hard on, on that one. Okay, so this one's the blade, and as you go around, yeah, you got it. There you go, perfect. There you go. Now, you've got, I think you've gone all the way around it. I think. Okay, you've got it. You've got a circle now. You have a perfect circle right here. Right here. Look at this. There you go. There oh you go. Oh my gosh. Oh, ho, ho. I would love that. That's okay, we'll, we'll send you home with one of those. Oh my gosh. That makes sense. Because, oh, then I could. Then yeah. I, but wait a minute. You set. Okay, try it again. Wait a minute, wait a try it over here. Hold on, hold on. Do you set this to a number of the right, size? Right, right, right. So you can do different sizes, okay? I can do my snowman. Yeah! Perfect oh, for snowman. I can do it myself. Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, the more I can do myself, the yeah. better Yeah. Oh! Yeah, wow. so we'll send you home with one of these and some extra blades, okay? Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. oh my gosh. Do you want to try again? She did it. She's got it. Perfect. Now you've gone all the way around. And now you can just pull this the circle off. Yeah. Oh, kind of got a little bit. And just, but see, I can yeah, and you it. did it. Diane, you did it without any tells. So hi, I'm, I'm Nathan Nersnosnik with The Grace Company here with the amazing quilter, <laughs> Diane, who uh, is experiencing a new upcoming item, a new feature we have, which we call Edge Warning. Uh, I think we will have demonstrated that on our Sure Stitch Elite, and this is, again, on our Continuum 2 frame. So Diane, I know she's done a little bit of some practicing. She just drew me a heart. Thank you. For, You're welcome. <laughs> she didn't know if I'd be able to guess that, so, so good job. But go ahead. You're free to go ahead and just do some more quilting. Okay. So we're going to go over here. And we will go on an angle up. Oh, this would be great. Okay, now we're going to go down on an angle. Oops. Oh. There you go. That's go good. Across. There. Now I'm going to go across again. Did I come back to my You're line? good. Yeah. You, yep, you did. You're a little past your line. Okay, now I'm going to go down. Okay, now I'm coming out of it. So what's that? So I saw the angle going up, and I'm not sure it angled down. It looked like a kind of a triangle shape, but we got scared by it. the... It's supposed to have been a Christmas tree. A Christmas but tree. Oh, well, it could look like... It looks a little bit like the Christmas tree, actually. But I'm going cactus. Oh, that was those, those were the ears. So now we're quite a bit past it. And what's it look like? So I'm guessing it looks like it could be like a cat. Oh gosh, you're good. <laughs> oh, you are good. Here's something that I think would happen if you continue to use this. Keep your hands on here. I want you to fill this. I'm just going to do a loop. That loop is staying in the same space, right? Mm -hmm. And if I were to go inside, that's a smaller loop in the middle now, right? Because mm, you can quilt inside. Yep, and then this is now wider than. I'm just thinking, this is one thing I could see you getting actually very comfortable with the space. Like if you move it up and I were to say, okay, there's the top, we're going to come over. We're going to bring you back down to where you started. That's the height. So we're going to mm -hmm. do a square. I'm gonna, I want you to fill the square. Mm -hmm. Fill the square. That's the same shape square now. Mm -hmm. I bet with not very much, you would actually be able to fill, fill in your in mind the distances yep. that you would be moving. So, so this is the new one, which we call, is going to be called our 21 Elite. Okay. So when you move it with your hands, go ahead and move a little faster. You'll hear it can go quite a bit quicker. There's going to be our back. I didn't set the edge warning on this one, but. Like a D, D, a B. <laughs> that is a B. Uh -huh. Now I'm guessing this is the top half of a snowman is what I'm guessing. You're good. <laughs> now do some buttons in the middle. Now you're in the middle of it right now, dead center of the snowman. So we're at the very bottom on, uh, towards his belly. There you go. And then move up. There you go. That's the middle section. And you move a little more. That's the top section. There you go. <laughs> there, you, there you go. That's my imagination. Yeah, you do. That was a great one. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for giving this a try. It was pretty fun. Can you can you do that with your eyes closed? And uh, no. no, no, no. I'm not going to try it either. So, hi, y'all. Welcome to the Grace Company Fall Festival Quilt Show. 
I just want to invite each and every one of you that are quilters, even looker honors, to come and enjoy this quilt show this year. You're going to enjoy it. I am Diane Rose, the amazing quilter, and I'm going to teach you how to quilt without sight. I am the only well-known totally blind quilter. I am working on this quilt, which is the cat in the hat. This will be a, a twin size quilt when it's done, and I am appliqueing. And would you like to see me thread a needle? So, I have it about ready. This is my scissors and it's a thread cutter that can be purchased at various sewing uh, stores. Oh, I cut the thread. Now, the needle that I normally use is a embroidery needle because it has a bigger eye. And this is white thread. My thread I keep in separate little bins. Too much thread there. Um, at the house, because that's a question a lot of folks ask me. How do you keep all your thread in um, separate? And that's how I do it. And I do have different people that will help me sometimes uh, match the thread to what I need to do on the epique. So these are the letters that I will be doing in white. This is called a, th a thread, a needle threader, sorry, a needle threader. So I'm gonna place this between the eye of the needle, through the eye of the needle, see? Went through the eye of the needle. I place the thread over my finger and I hold it like that. Y'all can see that? Okay. And I place it, and I'll bend that finger, I'll place it over the edge. There are two edges on the needle threader. Go to the smaller uh, side. Looks like a long horn. Pull the thread through. Yes, I always carry a little pouch that I put that in because they are easy to lose. And then I will pull this much. Oh, we will cut. This is wonderful. <laughs> I love sewing. I love to make quilts. And since 1998, I have made 1,100 1, quilts. They are all around the world. And I am so blessed to have the talent that God gave me to do these quilts. Now I'm making my knot and I wrap it around my thread. There are several different ways to do knots, but I'd rather do it that way. Because this is my little pouch, I am going to put him on the floor behind me. How about that? Now I've put the needle underneath. No, I do not sew myself. A lot of people ask that question and the answer is no. Okay, you see where that is right there where I stopped? Okay, I will pull up, go back a couple stitches, probably what, one or two, see, real close. Now, I'll pull the needle through, doo -doo -doo -doo. Now, this is called a blanket stitch. So I put the needle down and I turn the needle underneath and pull it back up, see? Put the thread over, pull through. I love doing this. I can spend hours. I usually spend a couple hours a day. If I'm in a hurry or really need to get something done, it might take me, uh, oh, I might work on it, you know, sometimes eight to 10 hours, just depending. Uh, I do have an app, AccuCut die that have several dies. I love to just create and do different things for different people. I do do custom made quilts. I also have lots of quilts on the amazing quilter.com. I will say that slower, the amazing quilter.com. See how much I've already done through here? Uh, the process of putting a quilt together that I do do sometimes is the, I call it the sandwiched uh, pillowcase type thing where you do your top and your back and you sandwich it together facing the, they face each other lay it down, put your bat, cut your batting according to it, put it on top, then I pin all the way around and leave about that much open, put two pins here, two pins here, then on the sewing machine, I will sew all the way around it, then I, op I put my finger between the front and the back, turn it inside out, pull it in, stick your hands inside and make sure you get to the corners really good and then flatten it down, and then fold the little edges over like this and then you sew it up and you have to because you have that opening so you sew that and sew that up and then I go around the whole edge of the quilt 
Then if I have appliques on it, then I can go back and hand stitch. That's a little, little tidbit for y'all. Do not be afraid to sew. Do not be afraid to do any clothes. This is a talent that God gave me to do, and I give him the glory for everything that I create because he's given me the opportunity to be able to bless you. I do not see anything at this time. Uh, so a, a, a legally blind is right below seeing where you can't drive. Partial sight is seeing colors and various things. Totally blind is seeing nothing. And I'm at that place for the, for the moment, but I believe in miracles. So I know my God could provide any miracle and uh, he takes good care of me. I am very, I am very happy to work for God. He takes good care of me. And I want to thank you so much for coming on to this uh, fall festival quilt show and just enjoy all the quilts. Vote for all of them. They're on here. This is a wonderful company and go to the, uh, the Grace Company and learn about the, the different uh, machines they have and just click on different things get to learn even if you're not a quilter it's very interesting to learn and go to the amazingquilter.com if you like to uh, donate to the ministry or purchase a quilt just click on that there's a paypal account and just most of all i just want you to be encouraged that to know that you could do anything you put your mind to. Don't let someone tell you no because you can't see or you can't walk or something. You can, okay? Remember that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can. Do not give up. That's my advice to you is do not give up. You have something to do with your life. God put you on this earth for a reason and you can and we'll do something. So thank you again for look, um, coming in and watching the Grace Company quilt show. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. Be blessed and know most of all that you are loved. Hi, welcome here at the Grace Company. I am so excited Nathan Erznostik and with us we have a lot of people and our special guest, the amazing quilter Diane Rose. With it, we thought we'd kind of do a little bit of a quick recap and kind of do a, a mic pass to see and talk a little bit about some of the things that really stood out to us. Thank you for being with us, Diane. <laughs> it's been an awesome time. It's been wonderful. I think you've experienced quite a few different things. Yes. Uh, here here in Utah. Was it now Utah? First time in Utah? Second yes, time in Utah? Yes, on my bucket list. Yeah, I mean, how God list. answered prayer. He always does. Incredible experience. Uh, there's no other words to than say, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for doing what you did for me. So I was super lucky. I got to be Diane's personal assistant this week. So I got to spend a lot of time with her going on all of her fun activities and just getting to just see how incredible and inspiring she is. Um, I've just had the best time and I adore you and can't Aww. wait to see you again. <laughs> Diane, it's been a pleasure to meet you. I was thrilled for the chance yesterday, and I just am really glad that we were able to make this connection. To have you come out here and join us and to, to see your talents in person and to meet you in person has been just an absolute joy. So thank you for making the journey. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. Wonderful. And you inspire us. You really are truly an incredible person, and you're just like I said earlier, a ray of sunshine that is just come into the grace company and you've blessed us with your sweet spirit and we are now your kindred spirits so thank you for being letting us be a part of this experience with you we all want to say thank you very much so it's been wonderful uh, it's been wonderful to have you in our homes it's been wonderful to have you uh, in our business it's been wonderful to have you in our lives uh, and as part of grace company so with it we're very appreciative so we have some great things that we've collected we know you like things from the places that you visited yes. we were honored to get you three bolts of fabric so we got Aww. you a sky blue a red and a black because we know you needed those we're going to ship those to you then we got you a basket of goodies uh -oh. You're good. So You're good. inside the basket of goodies, you got thread, our finesse Ooh. thread. Oh, that was the kind you showed me. Yeah. yeah. So it's all those different colors. Then you've got the oh, circle my cutter. Blade. Oh, bless God. <laughs> and then you've wow. got a wagon to this commemorate awesome. Utah. Oh, I found it. <laughs> oh, you found the mission wagon. Oh, cool. <laughs> and then we got you a true cut 
And those are extra blades for the circle color. Okay. And then some chocolate truffles. Can't go wrong with chocolate. No, those are true grips just to put on the back of the rulers and stuff oh, like that so they don't slide. Oh, so well, you'll need yeah. those. And then you've got a ruler and a cutter that we oh, tried wow. earlier, the big one. Uh -huh. And then some truffles. Oh, Lots yeah, you of can't chocolate. go wrong no. with chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody told me about how good these were. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to Utah and you got to get those. Yes. Wow, what a birthday, man. I am so blessed. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for a wonderful month. That is true. We also had a wonderful chance to celebrate your birthday <laughs> yes, just last did. week that was here. So. Oh, thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. And from that, uh, here at the Grace Company, thank you very much for joining us. And wonderful, Diane, and thank you for being part of our lives and enjoying us, uh, joining us for this wonderful week. So thank you very much. Thank you.